now that we have our speakers in, I'm just going to go ahead and take you a moment to attach them. Uh, you could use a lot of different ways to do this, and it's going to vary depending on your setup, but I happen to have a lot of extra washers, so I'm just going to use those to sort of hold these on there. And you could really use glue, whatever you want. Some of these spots are going to be hard to get to, so I'll probably hit them up with some glue, but the rest of them will screw down so that, you know, they're secure. And as far as an antenna, well, just happen to find this old radio controlled car remote so we will be uh, scavenging the antenna from that in my travels I also stumbled upon this ancient CD player that actually has an output line now if you recall the stereo itself has an input for CD so we're gonna see if we can cram this CD player in there also then that way we've got all of our bases covered except for basically USB and MP3 and uh, I don't know, maybe we'll see if we can incorporate them later, but basically this stereo is going to be able to handle anything you find in the wasteland, uh, except maybe an 8-track. So, luckily, with incredibly minimal prying, this top section comes off. And what we're going to do is we're going to mount this inside, and I already checked the clearance is good so when you close it this will close even with a record in the record player and it still closes nice and tight and then what will happen is this will just be like an upside down loading CD player um, you know you have to reach in to hit play you might not necessarily be able to see the display that well but you know it'll all be there all right so what we got going on here is I'm feeding the AC adapter and the output jack down through this hole where the arm goes uh, so luckily on this one I have this option so that way the wires will be able to run up right along the inside to where the CD player is going to attach and it'll be nice and clean all internal so I've been waiting on a super secret part to arrive so I can finish up this pirate radio that I've been working on and finally it's here now this particular part I could have made myself, and if you're working on this project, you can certainly make it yourself if you want to. Um, I had a bunch of parts here. I was starting to salvage. You know, I had a board and uh, some stuff, but ultimately, I decided it was actually just easier and cheaper to buy one online. This one comes with a mini USB, an input, a microphone. It has a display. It's got volume and frequency and a pause button on it. And it's just far superior to anything that I would have been able to create, um, you know, with my parts. So I decided to just buy this. Now, some of you out there are probably like, "Oh, well, okay, Max, that's great. What the hell? What the hell is this? This is an FM transmitter. What this is going to do is allow you to be the coolest kid in the wasteland because you'll be able to use your pirate radio." as a pirate radio station. That's right. The CDs, cassettes, records you play on here will be able to be broadcast throughout your camp. Now the range isn't going to be that great. I mean there's FCC laws and so on and so forth. But if you have a couple friends camping in tents, you know, maybe 50 to 100 feet, this should cover that area. So all you got to do is get these puppies tuned in sequence and you can broadcast whatever you want. You can announce things, you can play the music that you guys want to hear, and they can all tune into it. So, pretty awesome thing. Let me go ahead and get this hooked up and make sure that it works, and uh, we'll go ahead and test it out as long as everything goes okay. So I just tested this bad boy out and it works great. Got the record, tape deck, everything placed through it. I got it going to a radio I have a couple feet away, it's crystal clear I have a feeling that I'm gonna get good range but I got to get a radio that runs on batteries so I can test out that range but for right now let me go and give you a little demo here I'm gonna set the camera over by the radio and I'm gonna go stand outside in the rain for a second here and uh, you'll be able to see what I'm saying Yo, with your host, Max Sterling, playing all the Wasteland's greatest hits. Wow! Heavy metal.
Now, if that isn't cool, I don't know what is. Now, I initially just had this little FM transmitter hooked up to a battery pack. Now, if you want to make it portable and use it maybe as like a little communications device, like a little uh, basically FM walkie-talkie in case you needed to get back to the people at your camp, you could keep it like that, put it inside like a larger Altoids tin or something and use it as such. Maybe I'll do a separate video on that. But for me, since I'm using it for the radio, I'm going to connect it to a legitimate power source here. <clears throat> what I did was I got an old phone charger, made sure it was the correct voltage output, and then I'm going to take and just solder these ends on as opposed to the battery pack ends. And then that way, whenever the radio station's on, that will come on. And the actual transmitter, which is why I like this one, it has a pause button so you can stop it. So that way, if I want to just listen in my tent or just in a local area, I can have the radio playing. But then if I suddenly want to broadcast or I need to broadcast something, I can hit that pause button and go ahead and start talking or go ahead and start playing a song. So let me go ahead and get this all started together. I'm going to spare you the boring parts and uh, get it set up. And then we'll see about doing a full demo. So now this transmitter calls for just a wire to be attached. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that wire and I'm going to run it inside. I'm going to attach it to the actual antenna that I have attached to this. So that way it's going to get a long length of wire along with an actual antenna attached to it. So it should increase the transmitting range even further. All right, so this is where I'm looking to mount this. I actually cut out a big spot here in the middle between these tape decks that was doing nothing. Used a piece of hard plastic from a sign, which I'm going to glue in place. I got my power wires and my antenna wire coming through. So then this is going to mount right on here. If I have time, I'm going to see if I can get a door that swings down over top of it to protect it. But we'll see. I may just leave it out in the open like that. Um, probably better to do a protective cover for it. But at least for now, this will have it held in place so I can utilize it. I have this wire that I salvaged from that radio itself, one of the speakers, um, but I also have this newer one I got for a dollar on clearance at a store. So I'm actually going to go ahead and use this newer one because it's smaller and I know it's going to work as opposed to this one that has all kinds of weird stuff going on on the wires where they look like they're mounted. So I'm just going to go ahead and use this new one rather than this salvage one. So I'm just double checking all my power cords. So I got the original stereo power supply running in here, the CD player, the FM transmitter, all put into a surge protector, make sure that's on. What I'll do is I'll take this and we'll mount this to the bottom plate that covers this up. And then that way everything just still runs through one wire, but you know, you just plug it in, everything turns on. There's a bit of protection here in case something happens. So. Now that that's done, we'll put the bottom on. So the next step in the Wasteland radio station is, of course, decoration. So since we're doing a post-apocalyptic theme and we're doing a pirate radio station, I went ahead and got a stencil, cut it all out already. And then what we're going to do is just go ahead and spray paint it on here. Now, if you've never done this type of work before, you're going to want to affix this. You could probably put down anything that's slightly tacky to hold it down. Uh, you can just hit it with the spray paint. You may end up with a slightly, um, you know, rougher looking outcome, which is actually probably what I'm going to do. But you're going to want to make sure that you tape up the sides because you don't want a whole lot of overspray. But if you're looking for that overspray look, then just hit it just like this. Um, but if you're not used to using spray paint, then I mean, be prepared to probably have to paint over and try again. You could also use sponges, dab it on there. You can use a paintbrush, paint it on there. However you want to do it. But I'm guessing probably spray paint is going to be my coolest looking option. And that's what I'm going to go with. So we'll go ahead and do this. Add a few other adornments. Embellish it up a little bit. And then pretty much, that's it. We'll go ahead and fire it up and start broadcasting. So this is what it looks like after I hit it up. Play Eternal, shiny and chrome. Got some other work to do to it, but this is going to be the main focal point, so I wanted to make sure I got that on there. I'm going to hit it with some rub and buff. Uh, I got some metallic leftover from what I used on the lanterns. So we're going to hit this up 
in a lot of key places and do some other creative things to just really sort of wasteland it up and make it look awesome. So this is what we end up with, but don't worry if it didn't come out just right. You can always hit this up with a Sharpie and straighten up the lines. I'm gonna actually tidy this up just a little bit with just that. So sticking with the theme here of chrome, I went ahead and taped off these raised areas. There's three of them, so I just went ahead and taped them off. Masking tape, nothing special. We'll use a piece of cardboard to cover this up, which is still a work in progress here. I'm trying to clean up some of the lines on it. But um, yeah, we'll go ahead and spray paint this next. Just thought I'd give a midway progress report on this. So we've got our main paint piece done. Start adding some metal adornments. Got my door on here. You know, start adding some little things. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, still working on it. We'll see what it looks like when it's all done. So before I left the other day, I went ahead and did a little bit more painting on here. And also I'm working on this rusty can for another project. And I decided it'd be fun if we just happened to, you know, leave it sit there while it was rusting. And uh, get a nice little sort of rusted coffee ring there. And uh, that worked out pretty good. So, digging that. Pro tip. When you're applying the clear coat on your finished post-apocalyptic item, don't forget to just take a handful of dirt and spice it up a notch. So once you have your Wasteland Pirate radio ready, all you gotta do is hop in your war rig, turn the station to the appropriate frequency. Turn up the volume. And let the good times roll. Wow! This is Max Sterling with the Wasteland Pirate Radio, the only station in your post-apocalyptic wasteland still broadcasting on the airwaves. So, thanks for tuning in. Not like you had a choice, though. Well, let's check the weather. Looks totally nuclear. 130 degrees in the shade, with a slight chance of fallout. Hey, this is breaking news. If you're planning on going to the watering hole, you may want to stay away with reports of raiders down there taking a whiz in the water. So, I'd say give it a day, let things blow over, and then take your pail and go fetch some. Also, in other news, Barter Town has been shut down. Excessive winds causing sand dunes to appear and cover most of the place in rubble. So, unless you plan on bringing a shovel, you may want to stay clear there for about a week until they dig themselves back out and set up shop. Personally, I'd stay away from there at all costs. But hey, that's just Max's good advice on this wildly warm and sunny day. And of course, if you don't have a war rig, dig yourself up one of these lovely relics. Pop it on your head while you're out on patrol and listen to your favorite Wasteland radio station, Max's Wasteland Pirate Radio. Also, any FM receiver will do. Would you fuck me? I'd fuck me. I'd fuck me hard. I'd fuck me so hard. Oh, hey. I know sometimes these videos can get a little bit long and drawn out, but you know what? It's better to have too much information than not enough. Be sure to check out the next part of this video. So, let me go ahead and play us out. Until next time, adventure on.